AI tools are coming for our jobs, so I decided to put an end to it and create the most detailed prompt engineering guide to show it who is the master. Tonight, we're taking a deep dive into the world of AI. New AI features. Artificial intelligence model developed by OpenAI. Artificial intelligence. Chat GPT. This prompt engineering crash course is equally great both for beginners and advanced users, and to my knowledge, the most detailed prompt engineering crash course out there. I'm going to show you the following. First, explanations about prompts and prompt engineering, what are double and triple prompts, leveling up through OpenAI Playground, biggest mistakes you can do, how to master it, and lastly, I will have a very big surprise. Regarding the surprise at the end, it will be worth almost zero if you do not watch this in full, because I order information in a very, very specific way. And now is the right time to subscribe and hit that notification bell, because this is only the tip of the iceberg. I promise that this is not another one of those videos that drags on for 20 or 30 minutes without saying anything. I will show you what is basic and advanced prompt engineering, uh, using prompt engineering with ChatGPT, MeJourney, and other AI tools, and step-by-step -step guides on making money with these tools that were personally tested by me. Additionally, I will prepare you for my next three videos that will take you from learning this today to making money online in different niches right now. As mentioned, my goal is to cover everything in the tiniest detail. I'm leveraging this daily in my seven-figure design and development agency, which is called Brydog, a two-time Deloitte Fast 50 winner for fastest-growing tech firms, and we work with some massive brands like Rita Ora, Sky News, Airbus, Freelancer.com, and many, many more. Prompt engineers are currently one of the most sought-after people in IT, so if you are curious whether or not you should do this, you are definitely on the right path. Before anything, what are prompts and how do they tie in with ChatGPT, MidJourney, Stable Diffusion, and other AI tools? Prompts are input data, in most cases just plain text, used to guide the response of AI models so that you can get the desired results. Let's say that you write a prompt, write me a tagline for my new fashion product, and you will get an output or a result. Or let's say that you write to MidJourney, design a modern logo of an orange, and voila, logo it is. There are different prompts, but I will mostly focus on text-to-text, -text, like ChatGPT, which is an AI chatbot developed on large language models, and text-to-image, like MeJourney, which is an AI program that creates brilliant images out of simple text inputs. There are also some other models, like text-to-sound or text-to-video, but more on that later on. And let me show you one insane result on the latest version of MeJourney, just so that you can see how far things went. And no, this is not a real photo. This was composed by a computer just out of a single prompt. Crazy. Prompt engineering is the process of finding the best way to ask a question or give a command to an AI model so that it can give you the desired response. It requires creativity, critical thinking, and understanding of how AI models work. And to repeat, some of the famous AI that everyone is talking about are ChatGPT, which is a text-to-text -text AI, and then MeJourney, DALI, Stable Diffusion, and other, which can use textual prompts to create beautiful images. You can think here of logos, patterns, illustrations, and many, many other things. So let me show you one before and after example of prompt engineering in action, and before and after tweaking it. So the first thing is that we will ask the tool to give us a tagline for a fashion brand. Once we got that, we will feed it with some more details. Then, we are going to ask the tool to criticize it so that we can make it better. The tool asks us to provide some more clarity and details, so this is exactly what we will do. Now that we have a nicer quote, let's see what some famous designers would do. And let's try a bit of roleplay. I will ask it to pretend it's Giorgio Armani to see based on the data it has about Giorgio, what Giorgio would do differently, and we will get those desired results our first result was express your unique style with our fashion, which is quite basic, and our last is crafted with heritage, designed for the future, Louis Vuitton sustainable luxury for the modern world. Much better, no? Do you see how results are fundamentally different just by doing better prompting? This is what prompt engineering is all about. So, what did I do there? I first gave the tool a basic prompt and got basic results. Then I started with basic prompt engineering and expanded on my result with important additional information. Later, I added more and more information and asked the tool to help me with prompts, which I call 
Double Prompt Engineering. With Double Prompt Engineering, I actually asked the tool to help me structure the very prompt itself and thus I create a doubled relationship. Sometimes you will also see that these terms are being interchangeably used with actually just adding more than one prompt, which is also called Double Prompt Engineering. If you want to add another layer to it, you can ask it to pretend it's Elon Musk or any other well-known person and critique the work of the prompt itself and what would Elon do better. I use George Armani as the famous fashion creator. You can use any people as long as there is enough info about them online. So here is the order that we have. Prompting, writing the query itself, prompt engineering, which is finding the ways to improve the prompt. Then we have double prompting, which is asking the tool to help you with structuring the prompt. And lastly, triple prompting, asking the tool to criticize its own results and then come up with even better prompts. Reverse prompt engineering is a technique used to create more specific and targeted prompts for language models like GPT. As the name says, it starts the opposite or reverse way by adding the desired output of the language model first and then working backwards to create a prompt that will generate that output. The idea behind reverse prompt engineering is to provide more context and direction to the language model, allowing it to generate more accurate and relevant outputs. By creating prompts that are tailored to specific tasks or domains, users can improve the performance and efficiency of the language model and the prompt itself. And why do we do all of this? Because great prompts lead to great results, right? So let me talk about some expert updates now. After watching the newest release of ChatGPT4, they often ask the tool to act as an expert in their respective field, so I will do the same. Hey, act as a senior prompt engineer and write me a very detailed prompt on how I can instruct you to write brilliant taglines for a copywriting contest. I purposely went into the explanations and concepts first, but there is one thing that is more important than anything, and that is setting a goal. The only way to get the desired result from an AI, at least for now, is by having a very, very specific goal in mind and being really detailed about it. This can be done by questioning, commanding, instructing, or anything else, but you still need to know what you want, right? And let me just quickly touch on some more advanced stuff. One of them is OpenAI Playground, which is ideal for more experienced users who want to understand the different options when it comes to large language models, how they work, and so on and so on. OpenAI Playground is an online platform made by OpenAI, makers of ChatGPT and DALI. The Playground allows you to interact and experiment with different AI models created by OpenAI. As well, with Playground you can learn about AI, develop new AI models, explore AI applications, prototype AI projects, and collaborate on many different AI projects with other genius people. So let's go over some key terms. We have models. A model refers to a mathematical representation of a system or a process that can be used to make predictions or decisions based on input data. The large language model that is used here is called GPT, and that model has different specific models like DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, and other. The main difference between these models is the amount of information, speed, and cost. DaVinci is the model with the most information, around 175 billion parameters, but at the same time, it is a bit slower and more costly than the rest. From there, the models dropped in the amount of information and cost, but increase in speed in the following order. Curie, Babbage, and Ada. And how do models work? For example, if a user inputs the text, what is the weather like today, ChatGPT would break this down into individual tokens like what is the weather like and today. Another example, I like and then the model would use the probability of each possible next token to create a response that is relevant and accurate based on the context and patterns. These models are built using sophisticated algorithms that are trained on vast amount of data, such as books, uh, articles, and web pages. They're designed to understand the structure of language and generate human-like text. Next on is tokens. In ChatGPT, tokens are basic units of language model used to understand and generate responses to user inputs. A token can be a word, punctuation mark, or any other element of text that the model recognizes and suggests it as the next possible token. Tokens are equally divided between the prompt itself and the result, and one token is usually a four-character word. Even though answers vary and the length varies from Moodle to Moodle, many people claim that the length is approximately 4,000 tokens or around 3,000 words, which is actually divided between the prompt and the result. 
So if you write a prompt that is too long, you'll get results that might be cut off. Temperature and top P. Temperature and top P are parameters in the OpenAI playground that affect the level of randomness and creativity in the generated text. The main difference between temperature and top P is that temperature affects the entire distribution of probabilities, while top P only limits the selection of tokens to the most probable ones. This means that temperature can produce more unexpected and surprising outputs, while top P produces more predictable and consistent outputs. And let me now show you a simplified way on how we actually use Playground for our client. We received a list of categories of psychology problems and examples would be anxiety disorders, mood disorders, and so on and so on. And we then combined NLP capabilities of the playground and our fine-tuning efforts of the mode to sort textual inputs by the users of the app into pre-existing categories. And later, based off of those categories, the user will get the appropriate solution. And here is a quick, simple showcase on how the categorization could be set up. And just a quick note, this is not the actual logic behind it because we are forbidden from sharing it. It is just a simple rundown. Now this is covered, there are two big mistakes that people are often making when putting together prompts. They create prompts that are either being too simple or too vague so that the tool cannot understand what are the users asking, like yellow lemon logo or the one we started with, which is a tagline for a fashion brand. Or on the other hand, prompts that are being too complicated and thus the tool gets confused. And what do you need to do to become a master of prompt engineering? Learn the basics, what types of prompts are there and how to construct them. Practice with variations, start with simple prompts and experiment with variations. Then analyze and adjust, review generated output and adjust the prompting approach. Next on, try advanced techniques, explore with more advanced prompt engineering techniques like triple prompts or reverse prompts. Collaborate and seek feedback. This can be working with other users and seeking feedback to improve. Use prompt engineering tools. Here you can take advantage of prompt engineering tools like the OpenAI Playground or Sandbox or any other. Next on, keep practicing and refining. Continue to practice and refine the prompt engineering approach over time and just see what works for you. As well, let me guide you with step-by-step -step explanations on how I structure my prompts the tricks that I use and how I'm leveraging what exists to be a better prompter. Is that even a term? Our goal is to make money with these tools, so we need to see what are the different options for us and how that can bring us to actually make money online, right? And in this video, we covered the importance of prompt engineering for text-to-text -text AI tools and how it can be used to generate high quality and engaging content. We also explored basic and advanced techniques for prompt engineering, including single prompts, double prompts, triple prompts, reverse prompts, and many, many more. We also discussed some common mistakes to avoid when working with prompts, such as using vague or misleading prompts that can often produce irrelevant or low quality output. There are some tricks that you can use and that are quite helpful. You have a tool called RPRM that can assist you with thousands and thousands of prompt generation templates and those templates can be used for generative AI category like ChatGPT, MidJourney, Stable Diffusion, DALI, and other. It integrates directly into Chrome and ChatGPT so that you can easily use it within the interface and within your browser. If you do not want to create that integration, there are tools called Prompt Hero and Prompt Wipes, which are classic search tools with numerous different prompts, and many prompts are added on a daily basis, so even if you're unsure on how to write them, they can greatly help. As well, we have Future Tools that I owe that has many, many cool features in case that you just want to take things further. Let's now see how we can put ChatGPT into good use. With ChatGPT, we have so many different and advanced methods like Chain of Thought, which is COT, as well as its connected methods like Zero Shot and Self Consistency, Least to Most, and so on and so on. But as this is a crash course, I won't go into that many details today but I will definitely invite you to check out learnprompting.org, which is an incredible site packed with free value. The main idea of COT is that by showing the LLM, which is large language model, some few short examples where the reasoning process is explained, the LLM will also show the reasoning process when answering the prompt. This explanation often leads to more accurate results. However, let's simplify things and see how you can start creating great prompts right now. You need to give a tool a role, you will act as a senior prompt engineer, then instruction or a task, 
and you will create me a prompt for a specific task, question, please ask me as many questions as possible to define this, context, prompts will be about creating a Harry Potter character in a cyberpunk world or something crazy, examples, which is called few shots, create an illustration of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardy with its towering turrets, gothic ar architecture and magical atmosphere. Generate an image of a Quidditch match with players soaring through the air on broomsticks, uh, chasing the golden snitch and casting spells to gain the upper hand. And lastly, you need to iterate. Change, correct, give feedback and in simple words, iterate until you are happy with the results. Additionally, we can use something which is called knowledge generation. The idea behind knowledge generation is that you first ask the tool to generate information about a certain topic and then use it for any purpose like creating ads or writing blog posts or anything else. Let's say that we want to create a blog post about the history of website development. We will ask the tool to first provide us with unique facts about website development and that is called knowledge generation. And then we use that information to create a post, uh, ads or anything else. There are many different ways to use these tools and many, many different commands, but some of the popular ones are role prompting. You will instruct the tool to act as an expert and create different outputs. Structuring data or text summary. Different applications where you can use it to structure the data or create summaries of the, of the text for a specific purpose like tweet or anything else. Emailing, in which you can use different style modifiers. For example, you can ask it to create a cold email, which is very humorous, to check up on a client. Blogs or content, writing blogs with some limitations because Google can detect and doesn't like AI content. Ads, you can really become a famous advertiser without being too creative, just by giving and creating great prompts. And additionally, we have various different purposes like study buddy, assistance with coding, uh, contract clarifications, not actual writing of the contract, different writing styles, and lastly, amazing automatic integrations with tools like Zapier. Similarly, we have different ways on how we can master text-to-image AI tools like Midjourney, DALI, or Stable Diffusion. First, you go to Google, then Midjourney, and it will take you to a landing page. From there, you will be taken to Discord. On Discord, you can browse one of the public rooms for inspiration called Newbies, and work there, or you can start your own Midjourney bot, which is basically a private room. Before everything, initiate slash settings, and in settings, you can pick from different Midjourney versions, different art styles, quality, and something which is super important called Remix. And let me show you why. With all Midjourney images, we have something which is U1234 and V1234. U is an upscaler which simply recreates the image in a larger resolution and V is a variant of that specific image. Top left is 1, then we have 2, 3 and 4. And now the remix. If you have a remix option on, it will also allow you to include additional details when recreating your image. You will often see some weird characters or numbers behind prompts in Midjourney and maybe you were wondering what those are. They are called parameters. On their websites, docs.mejourney.com, you can find all of their parameters. They are divided into basic, model version, upscaler, and then other. I will cover up a couple of basic ones, but I definitely recommend that you check all of them in the documentation itself. We have aspect ratio, which can change the ratio of the produced image, quality, which is a level of detail, and Chaos, which allows the tool to create a more freely interpretation, and lastly, No, which basically removes a certain object, shape, or color from that image. Next on, we have commands. According to learnprompting.org, style modifiers are simply descriptors which consistently produce certain styles. They can be combined together to produce even more specific styles. They can include information about art periods, schools, and styles, but also art materials and media, techniques, and artists. There are various examples that you can use, like Photorealistic by Christopher Nolan, Painting, Digital Painting, Concept Art, Octane, Hyperrealistic, Natural Light, and so on and so on. Next on, we have Quality Boosters, and I think that is quite descriptive on its own. You can see that results are a bit better and a bit more clear, and some examples of usage can be. High resolution, 2K, 4K, 8K, clear, good lighting, detailed, extremely detailed, sharp focus, etc, etc. And let me show you one example of repetition. For some reason, if you say that you want a beautiful flower, it will give you a certain result, but if you write that you want a very, very, very beautiful flower, it will give you just something that is a bit better. 
Now, let's say that we want to emphasize something or simply remove elements of, of that flower, we can do the following. We have the initial, initial image of Brad Pitt and you see that the image is a bit distorted. With weighted terms, which is simply giving importance to certain elements in an image, we can fix that. Larger number means that element is more important and lower or minus number mean that number is less important, right? Now that all of these bad elements are marked with minus five, the image actually looks a lot better. For some reason, this worked better in older version before and with new one, you can simply explain to the tool and you will get equal results. Please note that you can go a lot deeper with all of this and I invite you to check the documentation and my favorite tools. You should start with learnprompting.org, which is a great starting point, and then use Prompt Hero, Prompt Vibes, FlowGPT, FutureTools.io, and AirPRM to assist you. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, if you want to grow, LifeArchitect.ai. The memo by Life Architect is a weekly newsletter about emerging breakthroughs in AI, and it does come with a price of $15 per month, but the value that you get is simply replaceable. First, I want to thank you for staying all until this moment and you definitely deserve my surprise. I went on and personally tested a few ways to easily make money online with some very, very simple methods, all from the comfort of your home. I created a whole video on how you can make money freelancing for designers with MidJourney here, for writers with ChatGPT here, and for data entry specialists some cool tips and tricks here. It took me around 20 minutes to make $150 on a design contest without any design skills, so I strongly recommend that you check all three of them. They are short, free, super detailed and efficient. And lastly, I hope that you will be able to use this information and I would really appreciate a subscribe and that you hit that notification bell as the content will just keep getting better and better. See you in the next one.